the side opposition in this debate can be many. One, it can be that they don't support this form of technology to be facilitated by anybody, hence you don't, government, don't support government facilitating this. Second, it can be that government shouldn't pay to all these women regardless of wherever they come from. And thirdly, it can be that the government should pay for a limited number of you, which is something that they choose. This comes from their perception about what inequality looks like in the society. In order to understand what this actually is and what this actually looks like with regards to should the government facilitate this process for all women or not, let us understand what is the perception of the basic social contract that exists in the society. That is whenever a baby is born, which may not be a person, but it's someone that will be a person, right? Whenever a baby is born, that baby does not consent to be a citizen of that country. Neither does it, does it consent to strive for its entire lifetime in that country. Neither does the mother consent to having that baby become a part of this society. It's something that's intrinsic and something that doesn't come from an ultimate version of choice, right? We think when this choice and interest is not on that unborn baby, we think that mother or that baby should not also have a burden of this kind of birth, but it's rather the state that should look after all forms of burdens that come out of this unconsent, unconsented kind of birth. Therefore, we support this kind of fundings on all sources, but in this debate, we support specifically on this. That is the version of differentiation in the perception of inequality comes in in this debate. That is their perception is that because you're rich, you should pay and poor student. Our version of inequality is that inequality in this debate when it comes to something as fundamental fundamental as that of birth in which the child does not consent to necessarily, we think our perception of inequality is not that of economic differentiation but it's rather that of a version of choice and that's something that we stand for in this debate with some extensive broad, with some extended ideas of the points brought up by the OG as well. But before moving any further to my point where I'll be talking about why specifically government and some exclusive benefits to it and why it's necessary the government that should be addressing these kind of benefits into materializing, I'll do some unique forms of reporters. Firstly, on their idea about exploitation of free services. Now, what we don't understand it was is what kind of exploitation they, these people are talking about, right? They never tell us what kind of exploitation can happen. But so, what we can assume that the only kind of exploitation that may potentially happen is that people giving excessive birth. Firstly, we don't think like why is that a problem? Because even if you give a lot of birth, at the end the burden is going to be on those people to raise that baby, right? So we don't think this. We do think that these people understand this basics of what happens in the future, right? Um, moreover, they also talk about alternatives like that of surrogacy. We don't think that's uh, broad enough for everyone to be interested uh, to opt into rights. So that's not a burden for me to clarify more in this debate. So the last thing they talk about here is about economic instability, which is rather of an assertion than an argument in itself. Because we don't understand how because government pays certain amount of funds on have making this possible and the OG has already talked about like where the funds actually come from and even if it's hard, the government has to strive on to doing this because birth is a fundamental on this. We don't understand how the fire is going to come out of the ground, the stock market is going to collapse, and all of these kind of things are going to happen because they make an assertion that economic instability is going to rise to its peak. But what we do argue here is that even if it's hard for the government, they should strive for this because they, because these people who are going to come out are inherently a part of this system which they never consented on. Now moving on to some of my substantives and a few versions of rebuttals will be incorporated with my substantives as well. But before that, anybody has any points of clarification? I'll take that as a no. Why government? Um, because let us understand who is doing it and who's coming out, right? We've already explained that it's the mother that's doing it. Um, we've understood since history. Yes. Well, so you mean you're going to give it to the women who are able or the women who are disabled? Because we're confused. Because the Prime Minister comes up here and talks about he's going to give it to all women. Yes, uh, sit down. Um, yeah, all women. Uh, moving on. So, who's doing it and who's coming out? Um, firstly, we say that the child is coming in. I've already explained the idea about social contact on this issue, right? What we say here is the need, reason as to why governments should facilitate on this principle, uh, on a principle level, is because the idea of rights, that's the basic idea of social contact theory that exists among the government and the individuals that are coming out in this in this particular process the idea of social contact should extend up to a point that these people get this basic privilege of coming out by the facilitation of government. It can uh, by the facilitation of government. That's the basic principle we talk about here. Why? Because birth is something that's very very fundamental. And when this happens, that person uh, that person is a part of the society. And moreover, in many instances, that person is a productive part of the society, right? So when a person comes in and becomes a productive part of the society, it's a responsibility of the society. In this case, the government to facilitate all of these kind of processes that come in. Why 
why technology moreover which is rather a bigger concern in this debate that is because when times are moving we think color technology should come into uh, come into consideration in instances where it's rather of an important choice and we say that these forms of technologies are not affordable to everybody and even if they're affordable to some uh, we've already talked about how inequality in this debate is not rather in an economic issue but rather that of choice we've already explained that so when technologies come we think it's government's responsibility intrinsically to have people say uh, access to these kind of um, these kind of technologies right and we've already fulfilled the burden to sewing to why all of these people should have what are the exclusive benefits of this first productivity that is when i don't take nine months of pregnancy not me but anyone else does not take nine months of pregnancy they can utilize these productive hours into something else right in turn that's beneficial to the society that's the kind of productive system that we live in so that's beneficial under that regard secondly it supports mother for example the, the, the physically disabled mothers for example workers who do not uh, want to compromise on their time uh, working just because they have to give birth workers who can't even afford these kind of policies who can't afford not working because it's harder and harder and tougher and tougher for these kind of women we think it's beneficial for these kind of women right in the comparative we need to tell us how these harms are uh, how these harms are not just exclusive to our side but it's inclusive or tell us how these harms don't exist in principle without that they're already out lastly it avoids risk that is like let's say to children when mother are like giving uh, like going on to this process when the baby is the bomb the uh, baby is in the uh, womb there are chances of miscarriage right these chances are potentially avoided but furthermore what happens also is let's take into consideration the idea of women that are unhealthy for giving birth who do not opt into positive or healthy lifestyles right let's say a take example of a mother who's a drunkard that mother mother's baby can potentially be a genetically defected baby that mother's baby can potentially be psychologically or mentally not as capable as other people's baby these children go through massive forms of discrimination in the society this policy gives an opportunity to stop that from happening because in, under our side we do not want to have these children in the society who would be blamed by the society telling that you are uniquely disabled because it's the fault of your mother that did not take into consideration healthy practices in the society what do we say at last government should pay this because it's a responsibility that exists for the government towards this mother and their children because they're coming out they do not necessarily have this concern but still they do that's why government should take into this consideration we say social contracts should extend to a point where fundamentals are addressed and fundamentals are paid we're proud to propose